When I first put my cast on the surveyor, I want to try and set it on the surveyor and I loosen this neural knob and I can rotate anterior posteriorly to where my plane is pretty parallel to the floor and I evaluate that by just using the tip of my analyzing rod and see whether I'm approximately parallel. I'll tell you right now this plane of occlusion on this cast has a curve of speed and it's a little bit difficult to say that it's going to be perfect but I can get some of my cast lined up to where that plane is relatively parallel to the floor and you look down it and you uh, also want to look from the facial surfaces and see that you have approximately the same type of uh, crest of curvature and undercuts on each side. But then you get down to brass tacks. The first thing that we look at on our cast is the guiding plane. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look for a path of insertion for this partial denture that uh, makes us have to make the least amount of adjustments on the teeth. We don't want to mutilate our teeth, so we're going to find a happy medium for a path of draw for our partial. So we take that analyzing rod and we look first at all, at, of all at our guiding planes. And what I'm looking at on this side surface of my tooth is I would like to have about the same triangular space of light on both of these teeth. Now, I happen when you level the plane pretty much with the surveyor, you kind of have that situation already. So it looks pretty good from this positioning. If it were not correct, I could move, adjust my table this direction if I wanted to um, increase the uh, decrease the spacing that I had here and increase the spacing I had here. So it, it depends on your guide planes, but you would want to adjust it anterior posteriorly until you had approximately the same undercuts on each side, requiring the least amount of cutting on these teeth on the side. After you get that taken care of, you don't want to change the anterior-posterior relationship of the cast, but we have to come up here and look at the guide planes in our anterior area. And the guide plane on a maxillary canine is going to come around like this, and it will come no farther forward than our, we look at this cusp tip. So our guide plate will come down right about at this particular position right here. So we want, and same for the other canine, we look at the uh, cusp tip and we do not want to bring our guide plate all the way to the facial surface or what you would have would be a sliver of metal and the denture tooth would butt up against that sliver of metal but yet from the front you would see a silver line on this patient. So we keep the guide plate back a little ways so that we can butt the denture tooth right up against this tooth and then we'll see tooth tooth and no sliver of metal. If we come forward also and adjust our guide plate all the way out to the front what happens is we've destroyed this inner tooth distance here and we'd have to set a larger denture tooth in there than what the patient had originally would not be very happy. They would not be very happy with that. So here again, we're going to try and equalize that triangular space of light on the patient's right. And we'll come over here and look at the patient's left. And again, on this particular cast, we pretty much have a, an almost equal situation. Um, where we're looking for a guide plate. If we didn't, we would loosen our table adjustment and we would move it to the um, patient's right if we wanted to create a, a greater undercut on this side 
or we would move it to the left if we wanted a greater spacing of light on this side. But our goal is get about the same amount of light showing through there so that we have to do the least amount of adjustment on our teeth. I'm going to move it. I'm trying not to move it now anterior posteriorly, but I'm going to move it just a smidge to the left and see if this gives us a little bit better triangular spacing or undercut in there so that we have to reduce that tooth a little less and, and it does. Gives me a little better uh, angulation for that. All right, so I have my guide plate set. I also want to look now, because we talked about a design, we talked about we need a clasp assembly next to this edentulous area. So we're going to look to see whether we think we have a 0.01 undercut on, and we want to separate that retention as much as possible. If we're up here, we're preventing rotation in this direction. If we're back here, we're facilitating retention to prevent rotation in that direction. We're not going to get much rotation on a partial denture when it's a tooth-bound partial denture, but still we do have those possibilities of forces that would release the clasping. We see that we do have an undercut in this area of our first premolar, and we're going to look at the distal facial of our molar, and I hope that you can see that little triangular space of light beneath where the rod touches. Remember that the rod must touch the side of the tooth and the space of light that you see below that rod is the point oh one, two, three, whatever undercut we might have there. We don't want to do this. That's not telling us anything. We have to find the height of contour of that tooth. So we want the rod down at the gingival margin and then look to see whether there is a space which is uh, below the bulge of the tooth or the, below the height of contour, which is an undercut. So we have one on both of these teeth right now, the way we have this angulated, and it looks really good. We're choosing not to put a clasp on the canine because of aesthetics. And in it, we do not have to have a clasp assembly on this tooth and this tooth and this tooth. And we're avoiding aesthetic problems by placing clasp on those two teeth. On the other side, we're going to try and balance this out so that we have relative balance of our partial denture. And we're going to come and we're going to look at the mesiofacial of our first premolar, and we'd like to look at the distofacial of our molar, and, and we have nice undercuts on both of those as it stands right now. So we don't really have to do a lot of movement or shifting around when this is uh, parallel to the floor. We never want to move around too much because we just be creating false undercuts if we place our cast in such a direction to create an undercut, when this partial is finally seated in the mouth, it's going to be relatively with the occlusal plane parallel to the floor, and you're just creating a false undercut in that area. So let's go ahead and measure and make sure that we have 0.01 undercuts. So we're going to put an O1 undercut gauge in the surveyor. We're going to come back here and I start out placing my undercut gauge right about at the gingival level. I place the vertical rod of my tool next to the tooth and then I pull up and let the little lip on the bottom of the undercut gauge touch the tooth. That is the .01 undercut on that tooth right there. And I'm going to turn this a little bit, make a little nick on my tooth, just a slight line there. And I'll mark that .01 undercut with my red pencil. Let me check that again. My lighting isn't as good as I'd like right here, but I got it. I nailed it. All right. We're going to look 
to see whether we have a 0.01 undercut on our premolar. And we're looking at the distofacial line angle. Remember that clasping gets its flexibility by its length. So when we're coming from this direction posteriorly, we want to engage a distofacial undercut. Now we don't want to go all the way back to the distal surface, but pretty much right there on that distofacial surface is where we'd like to engage our O1 undercut. On the premolar, again, I'm taking my O1 undercut gauge, putting it at the gingival margin area, I'm putting my vertical rod up against the tooth, and I'm pulling that undercut gauge up until it touches the tooth, and I'm going to twirl it a little bit, and I'm going to mark my O1 undercut on that tooth. Let's go over to the other side. We're separating retention, but we're also doing it in such a way that we're trying to keep things kind of symmetrical here. So we're going to look at the 0.01 undercut on our first premolar and the distofacial of our molar. So put the undercut gauge down at about at the gingival margin. Bring up the undercut gauge to where the vertical rod and the little lip are touching the tooth and where it touches the tooth, twirl that around, making a little mark in your tooth, and that's our .01 undercut position on our tooth right here. Now yours might be in a little different spot than mine is because some of the casts are different and your orientation might be just slightly different than mine. They're both probably right. So we're going to move that up, twirl that around, mark that little undercut on my first premolar, and it's definitely there, and I'm going to mark it. I'm just going to check to make sure I'm in the right spot. Yep, all right. So this is the position we're going to use to survey our cast. So take your undercut gauge out. Put the piece of lead in the lead sheath and let the lead overhang just a little bit. Not too much because you want that sheath to protect the lead. Insert it into your surveyor. Be careful not to have this clamp pulling in on the lead itself or it may break it for you. So I've got a little bit of lead exposed and my sheath and um, I'm going to survey the cast. By surveying the cast, I'm going to bring the lead down to the level of the gingiva so that I'm absolutely positive that the side of the lead is making the marking. I'm letting the lead find the height of contour. If I bring my surveyor up like this, then I'm marking the height of contour, okay? It's not the um, lead is not finding the height of contour. Now the table has to stay on the platform of the surveyor, can't move, and I'm going to come like this. Keep the lead about at the gingival level, but make sure that it's the side of the lead that's marking the height of contour of the tooth. Alright, we're going to go ahead and do that Again, lead at the gingival margin, let it touch the tooth. Make sure it's the side of the lead touching the tooth and come around all of the teeth that are next to edentulous areas, anything that metal's going to cross. On the maxillary arch, that gingival margin your, your survey line is going to be way down there because the teeth have a tendency to lean to the buckle on an upper cast. Okay. Do it on the other side.
If you get some markings on the cast at the base, it's no big deal. You just want to make sure that that side of the lead, and I'm going to come all the way back. So I have my cast surveyed all the way around. Now, what do we have to do? We have to tripod that cast. Put an O3 undercut gauge. Now, my undercut gauges are a little different than yours. Uh, yours have notches on them. Mine are the old-fashioned kind that were colored. And we're going to look for three spaces, three spots, widely spaced on this cast, as far away from one another as possible, where the undercut gauge touches the cast and we're going to make a little mark in our cast with the tip of that O3 undercut gauge and I can see that it's marking in all three places. You do not take the rod up and down. It has to be in a fixed position to tripod the cast. So when I get it at that point I'm going to take my red pencil and I'm going to make a line about three millimeters by three millimeters at those spots. Three to four millimeters by three to four millimeters. And I lost my one back there. and then I'm going to circle them in blue. Now this leaves no question at all for the laboratory technician as to where <laughs> my tripod marks are located. That way when I take this cast off of my surveyor, I have no problem sending it to the laboratory. The laboratory technician will put it on his surveyor. He will put it on his surveyor, come in here, and he's going to look for a spot where those three touch, and then he's going to tighten his surveyor, and he has it in exactly the same position that you have it on yours. We are now finished surveying our cast. We'll proceed with drawing our tentative design on a piece of paper so that we feel comfortable with what we're going to do on our cast.